third downs. Right. Like, I mean, Washington's defense played well, and then Cousins played well too. So, what what did you think about that? Um, Kirk Cousins had a really good game. I just had to give it to him. Twenty five for thirty. I think that said enough. Three hundred and sixty five yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, Thompson had a good good game as well. Six receptions for 150 yards with one touchdown. Derek Carr, like you say, he really just lacked. It was just um, 19 to 31, 118 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. And, like, I, I just really just wrote down the de- defense was gone. Like, I mean, their offensive line was just gone, the offense all together. I know Marshawn Lynch only, I think he had 16 yards all together. I didn't even write it down. I was just embarrassed. And I'm not an Oakland fan, but I, I really liked the team, and I was just embarrassed of them. They really just had to do better, especially I don't see the Redskins' defense being that much of a threat. I mean, of course, now they showed them – I can't say they fully showed themselves. I want to say this is just the Raiders beating themselves versus the Redskins just having a growing defense right now. And it, it goes back to the old adage that a lot of people say in the NFL. And a lot of people, I honestly do, do believe sometimes in this situation that this could be a factor. Sometimes traveling from the West Coast to the East Coast got a lot to do with how a team comes out there and play football. Uh, you know, the time zone change and the, the climate, the weather. That's true. You know, just the, you know, just the whole thing that goes into that. Right. So I don't know if that played a factor for Oakland, even though last season they did really well in the East Coast when they did have to come across the nation to play a game. Uh, it's a big Sunday night primetime game, so you would think that the Raiders would really come out and be – ready for this opportunity, this early season test. And yeah, I really don't look at Washington as a mm-hmm. one of those uh, formidable me teams. Like, me oh, neither. It's going to be tough for you to go in there win this game. But <laughs> it was before the yeah. game. They, they didn't pull they, it out. They shut their mouth. They went down there and, and shut Kirk their Cousins, mouth. And Kirk Cousins, he's dangerous. He, he yeah, really is. he really is. And I like the way uh, Robert, Robert Kelly's getting healthy now for the Redskins. And then you also have Chris Thompson, who's been playing – really well over the last few yeah. years too. He's been getting me a lot of points in fantasy football <laughs> too. So I was surprised that Oakland lost this one. Yeah, me too, man. It was really just a disappointing effort to see them go down like they did. So the last game, Monday night, Cowboys, Cardinals. And as much as I have invested in the Cowboys, my prediction is for them to go to the Super Bowl. I, I bet against them and, and it bit me in the butt. I mean D D U you called it and they pulled it out and I think I was just more so dreading their horrible week two performance, thinking that they weren't gonna pick up, you know, pick up their pieces. And they did. They went there and they they answered all the doubters, myself included, thinking that, you know, they hit a slump and they're really in a drought right now and they just showed that they just had an off game. They Pulled out a definite win, 28-17. to 17. Dak Prescott had a great game, 13 of 18 for 183 yards. Two touchdowns. Ezekiel Elliott, 22 carries, 80 yards, and one touchdown. Now, granted, Carson Palmer had a pretty good game, 29 for 48, 325 yards with two touchdowns. And, of course, the... The great one of the greatest hands, Larry Fitzgerald, thirteen receptions, one hundred and forty nine yards for one touchdown. So I mean, for the most part, I think it was a good game. I'm, I'm glad the Cowboys won. I'm, I, I have no shame into accepting this loss because I'm glad that the Cowboys did win. But you know, as far as what I thought, I, I kind of expected the Cardinals to kind of hit harder this game. But at the same time, I expected the Cowboys to come in a little weaker than they did. And they proved I, me wrong. It didn't surprise me. I, I, feel, I was kind of, it was a toss up for me who I thought would win, but I thought Dallas would bounce back from how they played, you know, against Denver last week. And, and Dak really did some good things. He had a better showing than what he did last week. And uh, it, it was just an overall good performance for them. Um, did they take the ball away a couple times on defense? Did Palmer, what was Palmer's numbers again? Two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. No interceptions. No interception. He didn't turn the ball over, and I was still surprised they lost by 
you know, a double digit. Uh, right. I think I what ended that. up happening is just Dallas has had more momentum going for them. Uh, and they, they had a couple of really good drives um, that really ended, you know, for touchdowns. They didn't kick any field goals in this game. So that yeah. just goes to show you that, hey, they finished, they finished the drives whenever they got close enough to score or whether it was on a long score or whatever it was, whatever the case was, they took advantage of every opportunity they had to score touchdowns. And I think that was different from what we saw last week. Now, Denver does have a really good defense. Arizona's defense is pretty pretty good too, but I don't think they're the caliber of a Denver Bronco defense. So for Dallas to bounce back that way, I mean, that was a good win for them. Definitely. Definitely, man. So to tally up all of our predictions this week, D. Moody – Took it eight and eight. He evened out, but that was the win. The edge over me. I only came to six and ten, man. That was I had a losing effort this week. Oh, uh, you coming back, huh? Yeah, they come, they come I mean, yeah, you, definitely. He's if if you want to know the whole season record before this week, um, I was twenty three and eight. Derek D. Moody was um seventeen and fourteen, but adding on to this week, our whole season record now is for D. Moody twenty five and twenty two. And luckily, I'm still ahead, the uh, 29 and 18. It really is just because of my week one that I'm still in the league. Yeah, yeah. Because you've won both weeks now. So mm-hmm. so I just feel like next week could really... Yeah, hey, oh, it can change. I, I really could <laughs> dethrone you next week. Right. right. I might you know, just have to agree with you for no, our, no, <laughs> all the games. The thing was, we agreed on a lot of games. Yeah. Week, and we were wrong when we agreed. So yeah. That's what made everything... Even now, I'm just able to pick a couple of more right, right. than what you were. Actually, exactly. just two more, and that was the difference. So, um, I, I like the way it's going. I'm only four games back now. Yep. So, you know, <laughs> at, after you know, over the past two weeks, after my five and ten start, I've gone twenty and twelve. Ooh. So I picked twenty of thirty-two right. So I've gone on a run here. Mm-hmm. And after your twenty-three and eight, you pretty much have. Yeah, I've stalled out hard. Yeah, because <laughs> you started out what twelve and three. Mm-hmm. You've only gone seventeen and eleven in the past two weeks. So uh, it, it, it's getting <laughs> yeah. down to the nitty gritty now. It is. We still got a long season though, so a lot can still happen. I do like the competitive nature of this. Just trying to see how many we can pick correct versus you know each other. So also, I, um, you said something when we was talking about. My Raiders being my top for my power rankings. Do you have a new power rankings after this week? Has anything changed in your power rankings for this week? It actually has. Okay. Uh, Denver's no longer there. <laughs> okay. Uh, Oakland is still sitting there at five. All right. Uh, and I was kind of glad I had them really low last week after their performance this week. So uh, I have them at five. Okay. I have a new entry into my top four. Okay. It's the Dallas Cowboys at four. All right. At two and one. I like uh, that. Pittsburgh is no longer in my top five. Pittsburgh uh, is out. Pittsburgh is out from last week. Wow. Okay. Number three still remaining the same. Patriots. Patriots at two and one. Okay. Um, and my number two team, Atlanta. Atlanta's you know, number two. I hate to put Atlanta over New England just by virtue of what happened this week, <laughs> but I do have to be realistic with this. Right. Uh, they are unblemished, so they don't have any <clears throat> losses. They're 3-0. It was a tight win that they, they pulled out. They flew away with it. Right. Uh, so they're number two right now. And number one remains Kansas City. Number one three-0. remains the Chiefs. So my top five, KC, Atlanta, New England, Dallas, and Oakland. Okay. Yeah, I definitely had some changes to my power rankings. Last week, as he mentioned, Raiders was my number one. My number two was the Chiefs. Three Lions, four Falcons, five Steelers. This week, I'm going to do like you did, go from five up. I added someone. I removed the Steelers as well. Okay, we agreed on that. <clears throat> and I added Dallas. Dallas, uh, okay, Dallas okay, is my okay, number yeah, five We kind of agreed on that. Yeah. yeah. So, now, for number four... Took a major drop. Probably the best, the greatest drop in my top five is the Raiders. They're they're down to number four just by having a pitiful performance for me. Mm-hmm. Number three remains the same. Matthew and the Lions. Really? They remain the same. <laughs> Nothing you changes. Really kept them in there. I, I'm keeping them at three. That's because I just because I can't I can't respect that win yet. 
I can't re- I can't respect the loss for the Lions. You paid millions of dollars to <laughs> make those types of throws and those big plays, and Matthew didn't come through. I still believe, man, because it was the refs. It wasn't Matthew. It was the refs. And you know what was very funny to me? Golden Tate, you know, it was almost to the day. Matter of fact, it was to the day. Yeah. Uh, five years ago. Remember the Phil Mary game? The oh. Seahawks and Green Bay game. Yeah. And they, they didn't know if it was an interception or a or catch. Touchdown. He was involved he's always in, in that play. He's always involved in some controversy. He's always involved in a controversial play. But see, he won that one. So, I, I, so he won that one. So I guess the karma came around and he had to lose this one. Yep. So. But, I mean, he wasn't in there. So, I mean, it wasn't no karma there. He That's was, true. That's he, true. He, he wasn't just in the end zone. Whatever. You know, whatever. We're not going to agree on this. And continue. My number two. What I don't believe is that I have met number two, but I'm being realistic like you. Number two is also the Falcons. Okay. So I I hate to just because of they shouldn't be there. They should be down because the Lions should have won. But anyway, and my number one now is the same as you. I pick Kansas City. Pretty much the only team that in my top five that showed any real dominance and. Out of the league, I feel like besides the Patriots, despite you don't even the fact have that they're two in your top five this week, yeah, they're two and one. They were in there last week, right? No, no, they weren't in there last. Okay. No, they might now. Okay. If they now, I will say this: seeing Tom Brady have five touchdowns in retrospect, I should have added them just and the week that just he had because of that. that too. But just because of the five touchdowns this week, I should have added them. But now, because if he, they need to be where Detroit is, take Detroit out. Detroit right now for me is like seven or eight right now. <laughs> I'll probably put Green Bay or Pitch- Green Bay at six, Pittsburgh at seven, Detroit mm-hmm. at eight. Wow. See, yeah. now I move. Now I will say this: the Patriots are now probably for me my number six. They're definitely they're up. They, they don't need your approval. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need your. You go ahead. You keep. But they gonna crack the top five. Oh yeah, I, I believe about so. About week eight or week nine, especially and that, especially uh, seven and one, eight and one. You ain't gonna have no choice but to put it. <laughs> All right, we'll see. <laughs> time, time will tell, my friend. Time will tell. But I will say the Rams are in my top ten. They're number ten. Oh man, that, boy, <laughs> that warms my heart. Man. They're number ten for that me. Warms my I, heart. I, I, I'll give it to them. Because you said last week they were like eighteen for yeah, you. Yeah, they were low. <laughs> no fifteen right after because you. I had. So I got Green Bay at six, Pittsburgh at seven, eight is uh, Detroit at two and one. Okay. Uh, number nine is Philly at okay. two and one. I can respect that. And then I'm gonna put uh, the Rams in. St. Louis at ten. L.A. L.A. Now. Oh yeah, L.A. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. L.A. at ten. It's all right. Most of my most of my gear is still St. Louis as well. So. Yeah, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Well, if we're all clear on week, recapping week three of the NFL, yes, again, sir. I took, took the, the win. week again. I'm closing in on C. Moody, four games back. Give me some applause here. Yes, sir. After yes, sir. the rough Take start it. for me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, you know, we discussed with you who we think our top five is as it stands this week. Uh, we're going to get back into the NFL a little later as we get ready to get into our week four picks um, some of the matchups uh, in week four uh, but we're going to take a quick break we're going to come back we're going to dive into some college football we had some big things happen there and release the new top 10 in college football and uh, this has been sports moods two moodies one duty sports we'll be right back